Jesus says here, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. Now, in the first part of this verse, I want you to notice, All that the Father giveth me. What's the Father giving to Jesus here? Us. Yeah? If you are a believer, then you are a gift from God the Father to the Son. How much does God value you? How much does God love you, believers? Well, how much do you value a gift? Normally by the amount you pay for it. How much does God the Father value you? What did he pay for you? His only begotten Son, the most precious thing in the universe. That is how much Jesus Christ loves you. Now look at this. For anyone without Christ. And him... And him that cometh to the Holy Spirit, I will in no wise cast out. Is that what it says? Does Jesus tell you to pray for the Holy Spirit to change your heart? Come to the Holy Spirit. Is that what Jesus says there? No, he says me. But how many of you are are not coming to Jesus because you're trying to present yourself. You're thinking, well, if the Holy Spirit changes me enough, then I'll be good enough to go to Jesus. That's not what Jesus says. He says you come to him just as you are. And also, him that cometh to me. You can't go to Jesus Christ holding on to sin. And I've seen this before. I've... People who are, are trying to sneak over the bar. They're trying to have salvation without repenting. They're trying to hold on to their own self but have Jesus Christ. They're trying to hold on to the world but go to Jesus Christ. That's not coming to Jesus. You can't follow the world and follow Jesus Christ. You can't follow self and follow Jesus Christ because they are going in two opposite directions. Without repentance, there is no salvation. You must count the cost. Look at this altogether lovely Christ, this lovely salvation. He is worth forsaking all for. You know, what is your life? What is it worth? Soon you'll be gone. As, as I sometimes say in the street, someone makes it big in this life. A famous sports star. In 200 years time, when they're dead, then no one is going to care that that person even lived. Apart from maybe some boring trivia nerd. <laughs> but the point in the illustration is that most people are living worthless and pathetic lives only to then spend an eternity in hell. Listen, no sin is worth holding on to to spend eternity in hell. If you loathe yourself so much, then why keep your eyes on it and keep a hold of it only to spend an eternity in hell? Why not forsake it and come to Christ? And he gives salvation. But notice here, this promise. Jesus says, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. If you truly want to be forgiven, if you truly want eternal life, Go to Jesus Christ and he will save you. You don't clean up your life. You go to him just as you are. Unconditional surrender. Say, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Amen. Knowing that he can save you, as, as the hymn goes, my sin, oh the joy of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole, all of my sin, is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Every bit of our sin nailed to the cross. Jesus says that's what he's done. Now he says to you, He who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. You are commanded to come. Jesus says, why will you not come to me and have life? He commands you, the gospel, to turn from living for self and to turn to Christ, believe him, follow him, that is a command. Jesus died for you. Whilst we're in John, if you just turn over to 15.9. 
Jesus says here, I mean, this is unbelievable. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. As God the Father loves God the Son, with that same love, Jesus Christ loves us, the believer. Let me ask you this. How much does God the Father love the Son? With an everlasting love? The love the Father has for the Son is without beginning, without end. The love God the Father has for the believer is without beginning, without end. Let me ask you another thing. Is there any imperfections the love the Father has for the Son? No, it's perfect. You see, part of our problems, believers, is that you're always looking for an imperfection in the love Jesus had has for you. You're always trying to base it on your performance. You must be done with that. Because if you get your eyes on yourself and you're looking at your performance then, and you're basing God's love for you on that, then you, when you think you're doing well, you'll either be like a self-righteous Pharisee or you'll be beat up all the time. As the Father hath loved me, even so have I loved you. That is the love God has for every believer.